you should always warm your car up before you start to fresh it. Hey, it's Patrick from Possum Born Motorsport. Today we're going to talk about how to not wreck your engine. When you first start your car, always have a look if any of the warning lights are on. And you should never fresh your car if the check engine light is on. Maintenance is a very important factor. There are a few important checks that you should regularly do to make sure your engine is healthy. One of them, always make sure your service is up to date. A couple of other checks are underneath the bonnet, so I'll just quickly jump out and show you. You always want to make sure to check your fluid levels. So we'll start with the engine oil. Always make sure that the level is good, the condition of the oil is good and it's been re recently serviced. And also that you are using the correct oil for the application. We use Mortal oils on all our performance car applications here. When you are checking the oil, make sure the car is cooled down. So all the oil from the engine has drained back into the sump. Clean it off, check it. You will see from the color what sort of condition it is in. With petrol cars, this should be a fairly goldy color. Um, with diesels, you would expect it to be a bit darker. And every dipstick will have a maximum and a minimum mark. Also, make sure that the coolant is always topped up. In most cars, this should be about a 50-50 mixture to make sure it works in cold conditions as well. Yeah. It's got a whole lot of shit as well. Sludge. Ensure your air filter is nice and clean. Often you find a lot of contamination, especially if you're doing a lot of uh, off-road or gravel, gravel driving. A very important part also is your cam belt that it has been changed on its uh, regular service intervals to prevent engine damage. If you want to drive your engine hard, you need to make sure it's in a good condition. So, have you checked if your engine has been serviced regularly? Does your engine have any oil or coolant leaks? And is all the maintenance up to date? These are very important things to check when you are going to drive the car hard or you intend to use it on a, on a racetrack. So in this particular example, you can see there are a number of oil leaks and they are quite significant. So the whole area behind the engine is all covered in oil. It, if there are this amount of leaks, it's pretty difficult to tell where exactly they're coming from. So we recommend cleaning them off and inspecting them one by one. Uh, you can see a water leak here. So if the water leak is significant enough to, that your engine will overheat, that is promoting also the heat gasket to fail. Um, so it's quite significant and you always want to make sure that there are no water leaks. If your engine has any oil or water leaks, not only can this cause more damage to the engine as far as engine failure, it can also have issues for the environment or you can be sent off the racetrack if you are spilling a lot of oil over the road. Something that is not so easy to tell from the outside is the engine condition internally. But we still recommend that you check it, especially if you're buying a new car or you intend to perform a lot of upgrades on the car and push it to its limits. Um, these are things like compression tests, cylinder leakage tests or oil filter analysis to give us a clearer picture of the engine internals without taking it apart. If there are any engine internal issues that are starting to build up, you're going to notice that your, car, your engine might be noisier 
um, you're gonna see a lack of power, but also importantly, you are going to keep damaging it further and further and making the repair more expensive in the long run. Knowing your engine is very important and that includes how it's been maintained, what condition it is in, and also what type of engine it is and what strengths and weaknesses it has. Um, that all has an effect on how you're going to drive it. You should talk to an expert for your particular engine. Um, talk to them about what servicing requirements and how you should drive the vehicle to get the most out of it without blowing it up. Here we've got a couple of examples. What happens if you are pushing engines to their limits or beyond? Um, these are all examples from our rally days. Uh, you can see a bunch of different parts of damage here. Make sure that your engine is capable of handling the amount of power that you want to put through it. Every engine has weaknesses and that can be anything from the block to crank piston, rods, heat sets, oil pumps. Just ensure that your engine is strong enough for the power level and the application that you're going to use it in. Over here we have an EZ30 block that we are building for higher power. So the factory block design wasn't going to be enough. So we have closed decked it and also installed sleeves to strengthen the block. If you are unsure what the weaknesses of your engine are or you want to just talk to someone that knows them well, find an expert that's dealing with your type of engine all the time and has seen all sort of failures that can happen. We all know that Subaru engines are basically bulletproof, but we've got a rare example here of a big end bearing failure. So make sure your engine is not the same. driving your engine you want to make sure that the engine is warm before you actually put your foot down. You also want to make sure that you are not always riding the car on the rev limiter. The more you rev it and the higher you rev it, the shorter the life of the engine will be. If something feels wrong with your car or you notice any funny noises, probably something is going, going on with it and it's worth to check it definitely don't recommend to keep driving it if it doesn't feel right. Riving the engine without load is very detrimental to the engine. As by the time it will hit the rev limiter, the engine free spins well past that limiter and reaches, reaches RPMs that it should never see. Everyone likes boost and it's the most, part, most fun part of it to ramp that up. But make sure before doing that that your engine is actually strong enough to handle the amount of boost you want to put through it. And also that it is tuned to suit. So see a qualified tuner to make sure that your engine is safe and will run at its optimum. If you want to make sure that you find a professional tuner, have a look at the National Vehicle Tuner Association website and you will find plenty of experts there. If you are going to drive your car hard around the racetrack or on the back roads, you want to consider a baffled sump. So there's always oil at the pickup and your engine doesn't suffer of oil starvation, which can cause uh, yeah, complete engine failure. We all know that skids are fun, but they are also hard on the car, especially if they're over a long period of time, as there will be no airflow, so your engine oil and coolant will get hotter and hotter, and it can cause engine failure. Always make sure that you are using the correct fuel that uh, is intended by the manufacturer or your tuner. Um, we've seen it very often that people run vehicles on low octane, which is causing knock and further engine damage so yeah be mindful and only use the right type of fuel if you don't know what sort of fuel should be used in your car come and see a professional and they will give you some guidance 
If you are pushing your engine to the limit, you need to be aware that it will wear faster and there may be engine damage at some point. So there's a lot of stress on the engine if you are extracting all the power it can make, as well as using features like anti-leg or launch control. It will all reduce the life of your engine, but it all is fun. So as a final summary, we would definitely recommend that you know your engine well, you always maintain it, and you are working with professionals that will look after it. That way you're gonna enjoy it for a long, long time to come.